All right, guys, uh, the next lesson that you're going to learn in PE is soccer. All right. Some of you, I think a couple of you played, played soccer before, right? Uh, if you haven't played soccer, soccer is a good game. I, I keep telling everybody, y'all might not believe it, but soccer can actually take you places that you cannot cannot imagine. I see some thumbs down back there, but it's okay. Uh, looking at the first topic, history. History of soccer. Everything has a history point. Everything has a history point, even sports. Uh, my basketball lovers, football lovers, and all sport enthusiasts, sports starts off somewhere. Uh, in the history of soccer, soccer's origin dates back to, uh, to around 1700 BC. All right, 1700 BC. The English invented and refined the game and it's all and it's known to date. Basic international rules have remained almost unchanged since the turn of the century. Uh, from the United States to Europe, the rules are the same. From the United States to Europe, the rules are the same. Uh, they have a lot of big international leagues in the United States and also those super international leagues in Europe. Um, this sport is known as football, but a lot of you, a lot of you take, a lot of you are going to say, ah, football is only in America. No, football in Europe is soccer. So these people take this sport very seriously. Who's ever seen a soccer uh, game on TV? Or if you glanced at TV and you pass it by, these people are playing soccer. Now, in those games, you'll see those crowds going really crazy. They take this stuff seriously. They're taking to the extreme where after that game and after a regular season game, you will probably have a riot or somebody seriously getting hurt over a soccer game because one side defeated the other side. And sometimes that's Britain against Europe. I mean, Britain against France. These people take this stuff very seriously. Uh, a lot of money goes into this, into this sport. So I can tell you that a lot of people – can get hurt during the exchanges of these games. All right, so the game of the game, soccer is played by two teams of 11 players. Uh, each goal counts for one point. The game is divided into two halves of 45 minutes each. When we are, when we get out there and play, we're going to uh, we're going to bring that scale down a lot. All right, it's not going to be 45 minutes a game. All right, because a lot of y'all wouldn't be able to last 45 minutes because a lot of y'all can't run to that extreme. So we're going to probably break that game down to 25 minutes. All right. Each goal counts as one point. The game is divided into two halves of, of 45 minutes. There are no timeouts. Play is continuous, except when a player is injured. A referee adds injury time, time to make up uh, for the stoppage of play. There is no overtime in international matches. There is no overtime for uh, uh, soccer. If a team scores one and the other team comes back and scores that one point, it's one mil. That's it. Game. The, and if the game ends at one and tied at one, that game is tied. That's it. Nobody won that day. Everybody's going to go home with an even scratch. All right, so that's the – and when it says continuous, you have to continuously run. So when we get out there and I'm just seeing somebody just standing here waiting for the ball to come to them, no, you got to continuously move. You got to get open. Uh, most of you play basketball. I can tell you a lot of soccer players, they, trans they transcend to uh, basketball easier because of the feet. All right. A lot of basketball players play soccer. Who's one of the most famous? Who's one of the most famous basketball players? You know that actually played pro soccer. And y'all know the name? Oh, oh. Who goes? Michael Jordan. No, Manu Manu Ginobili. Man, that dude played soccer. Manu Ginobili. Listen, Manu Ginobili played pro soccer before he went to the NBA. And he played pro soccer for ten years. And when he went to the NBA. Manu Ginobili was like uh, right at 27 years old when he went to when he, when he was a rookie in the, in the league. So he was one of the first people to transcend from soccer to the NBA, and then a lot of other international players came behind. 
they're seeing that's where the money was at the NBA. All right, the field. Now remember these numbers, guys, because you're going to see these numbers on your test. I will go ahead and highlight these numbers or put an asterisk by it with the pencil. The soccer field. The soccer field dimensions are slightly larger than American football field. The minimum is 110 yards by 70 yards. The maximum is 120 yards by 80 yards. All right? So that's a pretty large diameter of field. You have more field and more, more ground to cover in soccer. If somebody is able to kick the ball in the direction, and both of you are able to run at that ball at the same time to fight for position to get that ball back to the other side. So uh, there's a lot of, a lot of field and ground to be covered in soccer. All right, fouls and misconduct. Things we don't want to see, things I don't want to see. Mostly, uh, mostly directed to my guys in here. Uh, I don't want to see a lot of tripping. Number one is tripping, holding. Um, matter of fact, come here, Richard. When you hold, when you hold, stand right there. When you hold, you don't want to hold that. You can, when they're talking about hold, you can't hold under that person's arm, and you're trying to move the ball at the same time. Do not put your arm. You cannot touch that person from the top side of your body. Or you cannot grab that person. Because a lot of people, when you're running with the soccer, when, when you're uh, dribbling with the soccer ball, they're 10. Yes, it, it, we're going to get to that because you looked at me strange. When I say dribble, it's the same thing in soccer. You cannot grab that person by the arm or you can't grab their clothing. All right. So you got to be careful. That is a that is actually a yellow card or red card. All right. So tripping, holding, handball. When it, when when they're talking about handball, a lot of you said I, I don't want the ball to hit my head. You can't, but you cannot put your hands up to tip the ball or knock the ball out the way, or it instantly goes to the other team. All right. Kicking, jumping, charging, pushing, striking, or spitting on an opponent. Indirect kicks are awarded for the following all right so all of those things such as kicking jumping and charging and pushing can actually happen in this game i, I we went to the this school right here that i worked at that i worked at uh called covenant christian they have they actually have some great soccer teams they have some great soccer teams and one of the games I went to, these kids actually got into a kicking and spitting match and uh, headbutting and all of those things. Half of the team, both teams, and it's funny, y'all sound, it sound funny, but half of those teams got suspended and the game got canceled. All right, position, going to positions. Players, I will dictate who's going to be what. Uh, you got forwards and strikers. I see a lot of people that can play that position in. Uh, middle uh, middle fielders. Well, going back, uh, it says forward and strikers are two or four uh, offensive players responsible for scoring goals. If you are that person you think you can score that goal or you think uh, you can kick that ball into the net, you're going to be a striker or a forward. A middle fielder, two to four players may, uh, who makes up mostly covers the middle field and may play defensively and offensively. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to play that position. But I uh, play defense in soccer is a, is, a, is a tax because that means you got to outlast that, that person that you're about to play offense against. All right. So if you could play defense in, if you could play defense in soccer, and if you was playing pro soccer, you would you are actually one of the higher pay, paid players there, because that player has to stay on the field for at least 30, 35 to forty minutes uh, each half. And how many how many minutes you play both halves? Forty five. So think about how many minutes that person stays on the field. 
Uh, defenders, defensive players who cover or guard the opposing team's uh, forwards and helps the goalie at all times. Uh, the games that we've seen online the other day, uh, the two girl games that we've seen online, where we've seen these people were continuously attacking, continuously attacking each other at the goal. How many people you've seen falling and, and, and flopping in front of the ball, trying to stop that ball from getting into the goal? A lot. You've seen about four or five people at a time trying to help that goalie out. At one point, the goalie came to her, and, and the goalie came out and said, hey, you need to come here and help. Because she was by herself getting attacked every time. So if you got somebody repeatedly attacking the goal, you need more people in front of the goal to help that goalie out. And the goalie, the only player allowed to use their hands. You're the, and whoever plays that position. I know Will said he wanted to play that position. That's the only person that said they need they they can touch that ball with their hands or grab the ball at all time. Doesn't matter where if the ball comes in their vicinity, they grab that ball and take it out. All right, they could take it if if you were coming and trying to kick that ball, they could get there and pick it up. And stop the play. So they are basically the play stop. Catch it, uh, uh, that, that's the goal. Playing the ball. All right, so I'm at the bottom of the page. Playing the ball. A player may use any part of their body from head all the way down to their feet. Not your feet. The only thing you can't use is your hand. All right. Even if the ball hits your arm, you can actually the ball can bounce off of your arm and you can go attack the ball. All right. Says so playing the ball, a player must use any part of the body except hands and arms in order to stop the control or pass the ball, move with it, move with it, or score. A player may use feet, head, thighs, and chest. All right. So you cannot, you cannot use your hand. All right, don't use your hand. If I see anybody try to catch the ball with it, with it just like this, you're coming out. We're going to go ahead and sub you out. All right. Out of play. A ball is out of play when it's completely crosses the goal lines or touch lines, whether on the ground or in the air, or when the game has been stopped by the referee. If it rebounds into the field of play from a goal post cross bar, corner flag, post, or official, it is still in play. So you could basically go out of bounds, but at the same time, the ball, if the ball is still in play, you can still kick around that out of bounds line and keep the ball going. Throw in. Taking along, taking, taking along the touchline or the point where the ball went out of play. Awarded, awarded against. A throw in, taking along the touch line at a point where the ball went out of play. Awarded against the team that last touched the ball. The ball must be thrown into play by both hands. So basically, if I'm standing on the outside of the line or outside of the goalpost, you have to throw the ball with two hands. You can't kick it. You can't throw it with one hand. You have to throw it with two hands. If I was throwing the ball directly to you, I have to go this way. Instead of I can't throw it. Don't throw it at the person's feet. All right? What you try to do is try to lead that person to the goal where it's easy for them to score. All right? So... If I see anybody throwing at your feet and the ball gets stolen and goes to the other way, that's on you. And, the, and your teammates probably going to be very upset about that. Kicks on page two. Goal kicks are awarded to defend the team when the ball crosses their goal line after having, last, having been last touched by an opponent. It is taken from the goal area on the half closest to the point where the ball crossed the goal line. If it can't be brought into play by anyone, including the GOAT. All right. Corner kick. Corner kick is awarded to the attacking team if the ball crosses the goal line, having last been touched by the defending team. It is taken from the appropriate side of the goal 
and the ball that the ball went out. So basically, if the ball goes, if this is the goal, and the ball goes out on that side, whoever is in that corner is allowed to kick that ball from this corner to the middle. Now that's for those middle strikers, the people that think they can, that they can score. All right, if you think you can score, you probably be one of those recipients in the middle waiting for that ball to get, get kicked to you and you're trying to kick the ball into the goal. All right, penalty kick, awarded to attacking the team when a foul takes place. That's when you see somebody slide into your feet, slide into your shin. I've seen somebody in the soccer game get kicked in their leg and they're walking out with an egg on their knee. All right, you can you can actually get seriously kicked in this game. All right, you can uh, if somebody gets angry enough and you are running, and you are running, and that person runs on side of you, then they go they're trying to get the ball from out of your legs. They can actually put their legs between you between yours and trip you pretty hard. I see people hit their face and and they walking out with a bloody face. All right, so. If you think this game is not serious or you think this game is not dangerous, it can be dangerous at times. But you gotta you gotta be maintain confidence that you can play with a with a good attitude out there. All right, so it says penalty kick a water to the tagging team when the uh team when a foul takes place within the penalty area. All players except the kicker and the goalie must be outside the penalty area and at least 10 yards from the penalty mark. So 10 yards from the kicker, the goalie has to be 10 yards out. All right. They are trying to stop your kick. And that's basically a one-on-one, a one-on-one deal. Whoever has the better footwork. And you can fake that person going left or right to get that ball in the goal. Guarantee you, you uh you're gonna make it look crazy or bad when you go when the ball goes past you. Free kicks taken from the point where the offense occurred. All players must be at least 10 yards from the ball until it, it, it is kicked. Two types of kicks, a direct kick, and that's that one-on-one -on -one kick again, uh, in which the player can score directly or indirect kick. A goal cannot be scored until another player has touched the ball. All right, so, so on some indirect kicks, you have some teams that line up four people, four, four or five people across, and they got to be able to kick that ball directly over their head into the goal. And you include, including the goalie that's back there. They got to be able to kick that ball over all of those people. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. All right, so at the bottom, additional terms, blocking, trapping, Stopping the motion of the ball with some parts of the body. Carrying, carrying an infraction by the goalie when they take more than three steps while holding the ball. And you guys might want to highlight all those all those additional terms because they will be on the test. Uh, kick off, I mean drop kick. A drop kick is just like uh, if you, who's ever kicked a football? Who's ever kicked a, uh, a football with a drop kick? That's a drop kick. Just dropping the ball on your foot and kick. It's the same thing as kicking a soccer ball. Now, some people think they can kick. I'll, I'll be able to see if they can kick the ball. Uh, an indirect kick. An indirect kick. Kickoff in, uh, well, I'm sorry, kickoff. An indirect kick from the center of the field that starts, that starts the game and restarts the game after a goal. Punt, same thing. You got some same terms as football. Punting, a ball kicked by the goalie within their own goal area. A lot of a lot of NFL punters, a lot of NFL punters, they start off from soccer. A lot of NFL punters start off from soccer. And uh everybody wonders where these guys come from. These guys get seen in uh in college playing soccer as goalies and end up in the NFL kicking the ball. Uh, professional offsides a violation where an offensive player is behind the last defensive player before the ball is kicked 
This map, this diagram, this diagram at the bottom, this diagram at the bottom, this diagram at the bottom will be on your test. All right? This diagram will be on your test. You have the goalie, and now a lot of people got confused on the diagram for uh, the flag football portion. All right? So you need to pay special attention of where people are supposed to be positioned. These people that's in the middle, these are the 11 players of where they're supposed to be positioned. Remember their, their position. You got the forwards, you got the middle fielders, and you got the what? You got the defense, defense right here, right? All right, you got the sideline. Make sure you recognize this This is sideline because you're going to see that question. You're going to see that that uh, underline there where it's, it's asking, what is this line? This is sideline. Uh, you got the goal line, the goal box, you got the center circle, and you got the penalty box. All right, penalty box is in front of the goal. All right, so when we get out there, and you guys, uh, get you guys get it, get in tune of what we're doing. This actually could be a fun game. All right, a lot of you, a lot of you shaking your head, but. The only bad thing is a lot of you just don't like to run. But I think most of you are going to have fun. All right. 